welcome to another episode of Goal Horns and Fight Songs, a podcast about the NCHC that is streamed live here on Twitch and uploaded to YouTube. I am your host as always, Wes, and joining me this th- once again is my co-host, Mike. Mike, how are you doing tonight? Doing really well. How are you? Oh, you know, waiting for more news to come out about sports and, and hockey in general. Um, who is it? Colorado just punched their tickets to the finals, the Stanley Cup finals, and they're waiting to see whether they play the Lightning or the Rangers. Yeah, and right now it looks like Lightning are up one nothing. A uh, little, little bit before midway through the second. So. Uh, yeah, got got NBA finals, got NHL, well, conference finals, and then the finals, and then we're we're stuck with uh, baseball for a little while. But I know you and I have. Bet going on between us, between the Tigers and the and the Twins, so we have that to look forward to at least. You know, Tigers made up some a little bit of of room there. They were trailing a lot more than they used to, or not trailing as much as they used to be now. So happy about that. <laughs> uh, we're in kind of a slow part of college hockey news. Uh, most teams are getting ready to do their 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 stuff. I think some teams have announced their in-season or final season awards uh schedules are still kind of coming out here and there so we'll get more news as teams work on that but for tonight's episode we're going to break down the minnesota duluth schedule who were i think one of the first ones to release their full schedule i think they actually were the first that released their full schedule it was them and then uh miami was the second one and then now colorado college just released theirs this week uh or this weekend, just a few days ago. Yep. So uh, I do have it up on the screen. I don't know if you have it, but those following along at home, it'll be up there and we'll scroll through it as we need to. Um, but we'll jump right into it. And they're going to open the season with a home series versus Arizona State, who kind of seems to be doing the NCHC tour, playing uh, quite a few teams, I believe, from the conference, at least in the last couple of years. Yeah, they definitely have uh, gotten the early season test. I think part of it is they are such a new program that a lot of the NCHC schools, at least the top tier schools, are scheduling them kind of as that powder puff game or powder puff series. But at the same time, they were in the conversation uh, a few years ago for the NCAA tournament as an independent team. Yeah, and I mean they've been playing really well. They're they're not super consistent yet. I think that'll still come with uh, experience in the program and, and even consistent uh, scheduling. But you know they were able to upset number nine at the time, Cornell last year, and actually swept them. And they're they're a team. They're what in their fourth? This is this their fifth year now as a team, as a full Division One program, or is it? Fifth year playing Division One, but fourth year as a full Division One because I know their first year they they split time between Division I Three think it and might be Division their One. Third year full time Division oh, Okay, third I think year. They had a couple years of split time, and then I think it's like their fifth or sixth year as a program in general. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Um, they did not finish the season ranked, and they they were pretty much five. I mean, they were five hundred all year. They were seventeen, seventeen, and one last year. So definitely a team that. Has, has to work on just putting together wins. Um, but they did have six players from last year's team that moved up to the pro ranks. So they're, they're, they're um, developing players. They're, they're moving them you know, to where they, they want to go at some point. And they have shown a capability to beat decent teams. I know that they do play Denver quite a bit and Colorado College, and we'll even mention them again when we do our Colorado College breakdown because I have seen them on that schedule as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely a team that you can't take lightly. And it's, I think it's a really good start to, uh, opening the season for, for Duluth, honestly. And that's what I was going to say too. It, it's a good opening series because they're, they're a tough team, but they're not an NCHC team. So we're going to have a lot of guys coming in as new players and it's going to be their first taste of division one hockey. This is how it's played. This is how we do things. And it's, I like this a lot better than scheduling one of the Canadian colleges, um, you know, 
university of winnipeg or whoever that i think there was a college out of thunder bay that they would schedule it i i like this a lot better opening up and it's not as tough of a non-conference series as we've had in the past few years because our non-conference the past few years has been unbelievable yeah um yeah i don't know if they don't have an exhibition game listed yet i know colorado mm-hmm. college did have one listed I don't know if that's something that's going to change or if they're just deciding to not do one this year. Uh, But we do have that rule change that you can play. They kept that rule from the COVID year that you can play other Division I teams uh, as an exhibition to to start the year when they had trouble with the border and getting players across. We couldn't have those kind of exhibition games last year. And we did did see that last year with... um... I think it was North Dakota and Bemidji played yep. as their exhibition series. Yeah, and Western played Ohio State in an exhibition series last year. So um, interesting to see how that's going to progress. Like I said, maybe that's something they'll announce later. I don't know. Maybe this is, if this is their full schedule, then they're just going to jump right into uh, season play. Uh, and those games will be October 1st and 2nd, which I believe is a Saturday-Sunday, a lot of saturday sunday series to start the year too as i was noticing it, it is a saturday sunday and um i i feel good about the series for for umd uh especially if especially if stay skull is healthy and coming in as the number one goalie with fanti leaving um, i i've been trying to look at who we have coming in uh there's some goalies some forwards some defensemen but I'm not, I'm waiting until there's a full announcement in the roster. Then I can look up the guys that are going to be on the team and see, see what we have. Right. Uh, that moves us on to their next, or their second matchup. They actually have a week off in between their first series and their second series against Minnesota State. Uh, those will be away games at Mankato. And, you know, for a large part of the season last year, Mankato was the number one ranked team in the country. Uh, they ended up second, or they finished second in the NCHC tournament, or the NCAA tournament to Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they ended the year at a ranking of two. Uh, last year, they earned the sweep over UMD. And this was a team that, like, you, you might say, yes, they play uh, in, a, in a weaker conference. Um, but you know, at, at the same time, they did what they were supposed to do. They weren't a team that really struggled too much against teams that they were supposed to beat. In fact, they carried a 18 game winning streak to a CCHA regular season title, a CCHA tournament title in a, in a controversial game, the way that game ended, uh, with the overtime mm-hmm. thing and an NCAA championship appearance. So, I mean, which I believe was their first appearance second appearance i don't think they've had very many actual championship game appearances but I mean, um they had a stellar season yeah because they lost to i'm trying to think of the 2021 tournament um didn't they lose to duluth they, or no did they lose to massachusetts they i believe they were frozen they frozen. might have they were a frozen four team because it was no, they lost to St. Cloud because it was St. Cloud and UMass okay. in the championship game because we lost to UMass and right. Mankato lost to cloud. Right. Um, uh, but it will be a slightly different team. They do lose their Hobie Baker winning goalie in Drayden McKay and Nathan Smith also left after his junior season to join the Arizona Coyotes organization. So it will be a slightly different team. Uh, new goalie that I don't know how much play time they saw or even if they're, you know, the next in line as far yeah. as backup wise goes. Um, I don't have a lot of information on that team. I think you've seen them more recently than I have. But another, I think a really, this might be their best non-conference test of, of what they have scheduled looking at their schedule. And definitely a series that if they take too lightly or, or don't get up for one that they could lose. And looking at the schedule, it is the the toughest contest that they have as far as non-conference goes. Um, it, even if they, 
even with Mankato losing Dryden McKay and Smith, they still are just a stacked team. Uh, Mike Hastings is the coach down there. He knows he's built this program up. He knows what he's doing. Uh, I do like the fact that we have the week off in between. So Scott, after signing his extension, which good for him, uh, super happy that he's still going to be staying here and no more of those NHL rumors again. Uh, We're going to get to see, like he's going to get to see his team play and see how they work well together and what they don't do well together and adjust in that week off. And then it's, Boom, right in it. Because Mankato, they're I haven't paid attention too much to them, but I don't think they're losing a whole lot. And so they're gonna be probably preseason one, two, or three. Right. If they aren't, there's something wrong there. And uh like you mentioned, yeah, they're in the CCHA. It's kind of a weaker conference. And then they're going to have Augustana joining. They have St. Thomas. It's not a powerhouse. But when you can go in and sweep UMD, you can hang with all these NCHC schools. That one, I'm worried about it. I, I really am. The I think goaltending can make a difference in that series. Um, and just going forward, I'm going to assume Stasekal is the number one. Uh Stay skull versus whoever's coming in. Stay skulls played in big games. He played in that North Dakota five overtime game. He he played with Fanti. And I think that's where it's gonna come down to if we're down to nothing. Stay skull is like, oh okay, no big deal. I just keep playing my game. Where if the, if Mankato's down to nothing. Who knows what their goalie is going to do? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely an interesting series. Uh, then they come back home and they will host Wisconsin, who finished their season last year at ten twenty four and three. Ended up not being ranked. Uh, did not play in the the NCAA tournament. Uh, in fact, they finished fifth, tied with Penn State in the Big Ten. Uh, interesting stuff about Wisconsin is their one of their goalies is actually a transfer student to Western this year, uh, so they lose they lose a goaltender. Um, they're really super inconsistent throughout the season. Uh, they did pick up a few wins over raked opponents. I mean, playing in the Big Ten, you're going to be playing teams like Michigan, Minnesota, um, who were all. Oh, that's team. about it. yeah. You just Notre Dame. you can just stop there. I mean, even Notre Dame was pretty well. I think they were a top ten team for quite a bit of the year last year, and they gave Michigan all kinds of fits. Uh, so they do play against solid opponents. It's just I don't know that that conference as a whole is really much more outside of the name recognition that they get for being the Big Ten, which pulls most of its recognition from football and a little bit of the history of Michigan being. You know, a team that's won nine national titles in the past, nothing within the last 20-some years, but a team whose name is cemented in college hockey history. And uh, it, it's mostly football, a little bit of basketball, uh, just because of the rough and tumble, but hockey comes, Michigan and Minnesota, those are the two programs that you think of. Notre Dame, that would have been a mouth three no four years ago um in in saint paul at the frozen four uh umd beat them in the semifinals and then beat was that four years ago i don't i i I don't remember all i know is we beat them in in the semifinals Notre dame joining that you have that name recognition but the programs they just aren't there no no yeah i mean Michigan State is still struggling in that conference. Ohio State's been struggling a little bit in that conference. Uh, Penn State, who came into Division One hockey like a whirlwind, has has since cooled down and and not been the same thing they were at the beginning of the Big Ten conference uh, creation. Um, I think they're fi- they're finding has... their level, is what that conference seems to be doing. And and but you do hope that teams like Michigan State will. Uh, who are getting a new head coach this year will will kind of build back up to what they once were because even they were a, a really recognizable name in college hockey. Mm-hmm. And I know Ohio State they they played in the WCHA a little bit, um, but it's 
and they were competitive, but you think Big Ten, you expect greatness, and they're just not providing it. Uh, it, it was a money grab from the start. Everybody who follows college hockey knew that. And they wanted the TV deals. They wanted sponsorships. They wanted everything else. The kids don't want to play there. They want to play the best of the best. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not worried about the Wisconsin series. They, they can be a little bit dangerous, but eh, Big Ten teams, I, I know a few years ago, I even thought the same thing with the Gophers. I think it might have been Motsko's first year. And we went to, uh, it was a home and home series. And we went to the game at Mariucci and the Gophers won seven to two or something. It was unbelievable with how bad UMD played. I mean, I think that was probably 2019 and we won the championship that year, (laughs) but it was just like, good God, what happened? So it, it, it can happen. It's just, I'm not that worried about that series. And then uh, to close out October and non-conference play for the first half of the season, they will be home on October 28th and 29th uh, versus Cornell, a team that was uh, pretty inconsistent in themselves. Uh, They got swept by Arizona State one weekend, and then the next weekend they turned around and swept North Dakota in North Dakota. So a team that's capable of winning games. Um, You know, they had an 18-10-4 record. So they're up in that Ivy League class of schools, the Harvards, the Princetons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think a team that was has a really solid hockey history but hasn't really turned up much here recently. And, you know, those are one of those conferences that does weird stuff with their schedules anyway. So they're kind of yeah. hard to get a grasp of how good they really are at times. But – not really a team that you want to take too lightly. Again, they weren't, they were, they're another non ranked opponent from last year. So, really, we're looking at one ranked opponent for uh, Duluth here in their non conference schedule. But they'll, they'll close it out with Cornell before getting into NCHC play. And the ECAC, they're, they're so confusing. They're so hard to get a read on where they have teams Harvard a few years ago, they were super good. Um, at Cornell, they've been really good. Then there are years where it just drops off for the next, the whole conference as, as a whole, it just drops off and you don't know what happened. And so they're so up and down. You don't know what you're going to get from year to year. Uh, for October, the one thing that I do like is, we're relatively close to home for the whole month of October. Yeah. You only have one away series and that's at Mankato. So even that's not terribly far for you guys. Yeah. That's about, it's about a three hour drive, roughly three, three and a half hour drive from Duluth to Mankato. So the guys, yeah, they're going to get a little team bonding in, in Mankato, but they're still going to feel comfortable. They can still have friends and family come down. Uh, that Mankato series, eh, you know, I I might go down for that and spend a weekend in Mankato and, and go support the dogs because it's only hour and a half for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's so, not a bad drive. No, it, it's not, and especially if you make a weekend out of it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And Mankato is a great city, uh, and they – the one thing – that also worries me about that series is those Maverick fans. They really care about their team. They, they are hardcore and it's, I, I hate to say it, but it's almost more so than, than UMD Mankato. They love their Mavericks and it's a, it's a tough environment to go play in. Honestly, those games make for like the the most fun to go to too. When you're even as an away fan, like the atmosphere of the building will do so much. Just as a as a fan of the game and going to a place that either you don't have a team that you're pulling for, or you're just or you're you are an away fan. Like it, it, I'd much rather kind of jokingly talk to somebody 
at an away game than have nothing going on, even if my team's up eight to one. Uh, yeah, and I, I love it when I've gone there because it, you give each other a hard time, and especially here, uh, unless they're from North Dakota, everybody can give each other a hard time, and we can take it, we can give it, but at the end of the day, you always respect the other team, uh, and it makes it that much more fun when it's a competitive game and every fan is into it. Everybody wants their team to win. Uh, so I... You know, I may just have to go down to Mankato for that one. Uh, we will. They do start as much as they're you know pretty close to home. They do start the NCHC season in November uh, on the road at Colorado College. You know, a team that we saw at the bottom of the NCHC for most of the year last year. Uh, they lose goaltender Dominic Bassey. He actually transfers to Saint State, Saint Cloud State uh, for, for this season. So expect to, I would expect to see Mike Vernon as their num, true number one there in Colorado. Um, they also lose Jackson Judding. He transfers to J- Bemidji State. And Jordan Biro, I believe is his name, Biro. I'm not entirely sure uh, how much playing time he had, but he transfers to American International. So a couple a couple guys leaving the program but staying in college hockey. Um you know, a team that generally kind of tends to struggle in the NCHC. They were nine and twenty-four and three overall last year, so definitely trying to improve and really make their claim to that that new building that they just opened up last season. And I think that's going to be a, a big thing for them. And I, I don't like that we open up against Colorado College. I honestly don't, because you're going to get a group of kids that are hungry and want to prove themselves. And yeah, they've been towards the bottom, if not the bottom team the last few years in the NCHC, but it's, it's a new group of kids. You got some eager freshmen. We have a lot of new guys in the veterans combined with the young guys. I I'm, I am a little worried about that series, especially as an away series to open up the conference. Um, And you look at what they did at the end of the year to North Dakota, 2-1 each game in the first round of the, of the tournament. Right. Uh, So I, I'm not a huge fan of, of that series to open up. I would rather, first of all, I'd rather be playing at home, but second of all, I would rather play, an Omaha or a Western some someone that's a little bit higher up on the totem pole, because I think what can happen is our young guys are going to be like, Oh, well they were, they were last place. They were, or, you know, they were seven seed. Who cares? It's going to be different. No, no, that's not how it's going to go. And so at least if they saw, you know, three or six, the three or six seed, they'd be like, okay, yeah, we, we got to get up for this, but the, the bottom team. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't like that series at all. Colorado's a sneaky team, man. They are sneaky little sneak sneaks there. Uh, but you are back home and you do get one of those, you get Omaha uh, as your NCHC home opening series. Uh, they finished the season 21 and 17 last year. Which, honestly, if you look at their schedule last year, like, it's kind of, I don't know that it's indicative of how well or bad they played last year. Um, they started, they had a uh, a pretty easy-looking non-conference schedule. Uh, I believe they started the season, like, 12 games at home or something. Like, it was stupid how often they Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah. They, you know, they had, I believe Tyler Ward scored like 10 goals, earned the, the player of the month for October. Uh, I believe he's signed a pro deal or, or aged out, whatever it was. I don't remember which one. Um, they finished sixth in the NCHC. They went to o- uh, overtime in game two against Western Michigan before being swept out of the, the first round in the NCHC tournament. Um they lose goaltender Seville. I don't remember if he was a senior or not, but he signed a, a deal. I think he was. He was either a junior or a senior. 
he he was an upperclassman. I know that much. Um, but yeah, he signed a, a college or a pro deal with I believe Vegas is who he signed with. Um, another one of those teams that it's hard to take lightly, or to it, you don't want to take lightly. I should say um, they've had good years. They've had bad years. They're kind of an inconsistent team. They they do lose some weapons both in a, in a goaltender and you know their their most productive offensive player last season. And it'll be interesting to see how they like once we get to look at their schedule and how they built up their non conference schedule to see if they're a team that you know kind of has the same thing that they had last year where it's kind of a question mark as to how good they're really going to be depending on who they're playing. And, and and what that non conference schedule prepare or how well that non conference schedule prepares them for the the NCHC. And that's I with Omaha being her second NCHC series, I I don't know how I feel about it. In a sense, I'm like, okay, I'd rather play like I said, I'd rather play Omaha the first series instead of Colorado College because you know they can be good. But I think these four, or these first four games are dangerous because you have Colorado College. Guys might be like, oh, they're bottom dwellers. We don't have to get up for this game. Omaha, we finished ahead of them, like looking at schedules and whatever. I, at least it's at home. And at least the fans will show up for that. It, but I I don't know if I like that Omaha series either. I, w- I would rather have the next series uh, f- for our team, especially with how, how many guys we're losing uh, at Western Michigan. I would rather have that early on in the year than I would CC and then Omaha kind of, they might look at it as, easing into the nchc but i'm kind of like yeah uh you're not going to ease into this conference there is no easing into it no <clears throat> and you brought him up you know the next series is that series in kalamazoo against the western michigan my western michigan broncos uh and then they will be your second currently ranked team that you will see in the season um you know, there's going to be a lot of question marks for Western coming into next year, though. Uh, Brandon Bussey left after his junior year. He signed a pro deal with the Providence Bruins. It was a team that made a lot of history. We had the NCHC top goal scorer in Ethan Frank. He signed a pro deal leaving after his fifth year. Which, you know, thanks we, to him for joining last week. Yep, we made it to the NCHC finals for the first time and, and were shut out by Ryan Fanti and your UMD Bulldogs. Uh, we won our first NCAA tournament game with a overtime goal uh, to beat Northeastern. It's a team that's coming off of a lot of history. Uh, but at the same time, there's a lot, a lot of question marks. You know, I said Brandon Bussey left, but he's not the only goaltender that we lost this offseason. Mm-hmm. Both of our backups decided to transfer out. And it wasn't that, you know, they had... They were, it wasn't necessarily that they were experienced goaltenders either because I believe only one of them played 10 minutes all last season. Brandon Bussey was there for 95, 99% of the time on ice, whatever that you know amount ends up being. So we did pick up two goaltenders in the transfer portal. One I mentioned earlier, Cameron Rowe from Wisconsin, and we also got Kirk Larson, Larson from Miami. So a guy who's staying in the conference. Uh, switching sides of that rivalry. And, you know, those will probably be the two guys that compete for that that number one job at Western. But we do also have a pretty promising incoming freshman and Ryan McAllister, I believe, is coming in this year. Um, I mentioned him to you quickly. He had an (laughs) an incredible season in the AJHL up in Canada, culminating in a AJHL championship uh, for his team. And, if he plays as well as he did in that league, he's going to be one that everyone's going to have their eye on, that everyone's going to need to to watch. And if that dude's on the ice, you better be paying attention because he's going to play some incredible hockey, apparently. What, he had 60-some goals or something like that? It, like, it was just ungodly numbers. 
I think he had like I want to say he had like Kale McCarr style numbers in their playoff tournament, whatever it was. Like he was a Maybe. well above. He was like two points per game in the playoffs. I think. Um, just ridiculous numbers from the AJHL, which I don't know much about the league. I can't tell you good or bad what that league is, but he's he's a kid that has appeared on a lot of the commit watch Twitter. Uh, he's been all over Western Hockey Twitter. Um, it's a name that pops up, so it's one that you have to pay attention to. And I, I think I would the the AJHL. I would compare it. It's that second tier of. Um, the CHL it's that next tier below. So it's kind of USHL better than the NAHL USHL. So somewhere in there, I think that's where it stands. Probably more USHL level. Um, maybe between the USHL and the, the CHL leagues, just because if you go into one of the three main CHL leagues, you can't play in college. Right. Uh, so it's kind of either go into one of those or you head to the, the USHL. So those numbers are just unreal. And I, you know, honestly, that's with the turnover that each of our teams are having. That's the series that I'm looking forward to the most, just because of seeing what happens and, and uh, especially early on in the year, like in mid November, us having to play each other, that's going to be a really, really fun series. Um, and it was a good series last year too. I believe we uh, split the series. I think you might've gotten, I don't think it was a full split. Like I don't think it was six points a piece. I think one of us won, at least one there, game there was an overtime. overtime. Yeah, there um, was an overtime. So, you know, one team snuck away with an extra point. But two teams that generally battle pretty well against each other, were, they're two teams that are usually pretty similar in their style of play. Last year, they were they were almost mere images of each other. They were relying on experienced players across the board. Um, and this year, it's they're kind of the opposite of where everybody else is. They're going to have a lot of newer guys who are coming in and taking spots for the, those big experience classes that aged out and went on to pro ranks. You know, I just thought of something. Um, you Your ticket should not be behind the end that your team worms up on because you scare – apparently you scare every guy that we've talked to. <laughs> uh, they should be on the other side of the ice where the opposing team is warming up. Oh, that's where I sit now. Yeah, that's where my season tickets are. For last season and this season. I'm in the, the chair backs. Why, why are you scaring our freshmen? Why are you doing that? <laughs> hey, I mean, it's either get intimidated by someone wearing face paint or just wait because the student section is going to let you know who, who we are and, and whether or not your number means that you are a particular kind of person. So uh, that, that is true. Either way, it's not a fun time playing. <laughs> playing at Lost. No. Uh, no, and I, I, I can't wait to go there. But no. yes, I, I, I do wonder that same thing. We'll have to have someone from another team on at some point and you can ask them their same question of when they walk into loss and their first reaction mm-hmm. to seeing the the jackass that is that is me. Um, but you guys have a quick turnaround, and this time you get Colorado College at home after the Thanksgiving break. Um, you know, we, I don't really have much else to add to to the discussion on Colorado College other than you know what we covered the first time that you guys were playing them, but. You're, yeah. There's a lot of schedules like this where they just have, if you're playing the same team twice in the year, you're kind of stacked as far as playing them like once and then a kind of a quick turnaround. Um, other than for like you, for you guys, Western is that only one where you get them once at the beginning of the year and then once later in the year. Everybody else, it's, it's just stacked up on you. It, it, it really is. And it looks like you, you have uh, a couple t- schools that you're only playing once this year. Um, but after Colorado College, uh, you, you welcomed Denver, who were the number one team last year. They went 31-9-1. and one. Uh, A team... I don't know. You do play them twice. Okay, never mind. I don't know how to read. Don't. But they're, they're coming to you for the first game. Um, so all my little facts I'll save until later. Other than, you know, I believe... 
they're losing their number one scorer overall and Bobby Brink. He signed, I want to yes. say, with the Flyers. Yes, he did, because when we were talking with Trevor, we couldn't remember where he went, That's right. and he did go to the Flyers. So they got Noah Cates, Ronnie Adder, and Bobby Brink, that which is, is a, just, just that's, a, that's stupid. That's that's an all-star team, honestly, of, of guys coming from the NCHC. That is a really good sample of NCHC hockey there. Um, you know, they are they, they captured their ninth NCHC championship, tying them with Michigan for the uh, most. Um, they do have guys like Carter Mazur coming back, who had an incredible freshman season, a guy that I wish we could have somehow managed to steal here at Western, him being a, a Michigan dude. Uh, so he had a pretty good group of fans that traveled well, both to the, the NCAA tournament and even here at, at Lawson. Um, always good to see when, when someone has you know their fan base and they make it to to Lawson, whether that's an away player or you know players like Ethan Frank, whose mom and dad I had multiple conversations with, or, or mm-hmm. Trevor's parents. I saw them multiple times, both here and away. Um so yeah, definitely a team. They even travel well. I mean, they have a pretty good group of, of fans that travel, and you know they're they're probably the they're one of those teams where I don't know that it necessarily matters where they're playing. They train at that high altitude, so it's hard to gas them. You you have to play them extremely heavy. Uh, they don't have as much of they don't you don't really gain as much of a home ice advantage playing against them as far as like them keeping their legs or or getting tired. As long as their equipment makes the plane, they should be good to go. Right. You have to grind them down physically. And even this year, other than Bobby Brink, really, they were a grinded out team. They, again, the the top of the NCHC, they were going to grind it out. Uh, and they always kept their poise. You even saw it in the national championship game. Mankato goes up. Yeah. good for you guys yeah. like <laughs> we don't care yeah. uh and i can't remember their coach's name he's only a few years older than us he he's yeah. a really young guy but he's done one hell of a job there uh and he's recruiting kids they've been in the championship now twice in the last four years something like that i've yeah twice in the last five years somewhere somewhere in there i, I don't know covid makes because because so they they won they, won they beat before yeah five years because they, they won, won it in before duluth went back to back and after they won, yeah they were 2017 because they beat umd in chicago because i was there 2018 umd won 2019 umd won in buffalo 2020 was no canceled and then we got beat by umass in yep. 2021 yeah before so, that, I think it was St. Cloud in North Dakota in some combination of those two schools. Cause yes, we had one, that, like, that was the championship. Like um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, Denver's always a team that you're going to have to play your best. They they are currently ranked number one, and they deserve to be. They'll probably go into next season being that number one team, having won the tournament. But that, that's who you will close out the first half of the year. You get a nice long break and before a home-and-home with Bemidji, who is your only home and home series of next year. Yeah, um, it's a little weird seeing that. Uh, normally, we we have that rivalry with the University of Minnesota. Uh, there's always the Gopher reject chance or the Bulldog reject chance, and it, it switched over time. Early two thousands, it was definitely the Gopher rejects chance, um, and in the the past five to ten years it's switched to bulldog rejects uh as as the university of minnesota attendance has gone down their program has kind of gone down they have come back this year uh which i knew was going to happen with motsko moving there Uh, but i'm okay with uh the long break and then starting with the midgey i know they did have a good year last year uh they they lost in the heartbreaking or in heartbreaking fashion to Mankato in the CCHA championship game. Yeah, I mean, that was, they, they did play, they went 19 and 20 last year. Um, so right about 500. 
But, you know, I mean, even with all that said, they did push, who, and I believe Minnesota State was number one at the time. We're right, were right around there. Uh, you know, they pushed them to overtime and, and had a chance to, to knock them out of the, the tournament, the title game, and, and steal a spot in the NCAA tournament. Uh, didn't quite get it done, but not a team that I believe it could be counted out too easily. No, and they they beat a a good Northern Michigan team in the semifinals to get to the CCHA championship game, a Northern Michigan team that I believe swept us. Uh, now we didn't have Stayskull or Fanti. I believe Fanti had COVID, uh, but at UMD, you expect your third string goalie even to be as good as your starter. From what I heard on the radio, they just completely outplayed us. They Northern Michigan was just a, a better team uh, coached by a former gopher. And I, I don't know why I can't remember his name right now. Um, shoot. Who is it? So barring hmm. another NCAA appearance tournament appearance, which I, I believe that Del- Duluth definitely has the ability to get to uh, Bemidji will be your final non-conference opponent. And you get right back to conference play the next weekend this time at Omaha. Um, you know, we covered them. They're, they're going to have a new goaltender. Uh, some new guys will have to, to step up and play. Nebraska is one of those places where they, they can definitely, they d- tend to do better at home than they do away. And we, we saw that last year with how good of a start they got off to having all those home games. Um, a place that I think every team is kind of familiar with now because of the pod. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's hard to say that, but it's a different place with fans. So it is. And it's, I think getting that, that one week under our belt with the Midgey, a tough series, we can gear up for Omaha. When we talked about them, they're, they're just a team. You never, it, it, you don't know what you're going to get with them game to game. I don't even think their coaching staff knows what they're going to get from game to game. I don't even think the guys know what they're going to get. Uh, but then we have them, and then they always talk in the World Cup. Uh, there's always the one group of death as far as soccer goes. We start the stretch of death. Oh, yeah. It, it turns up a notch <laughs> here for, for you guys to end your season. This might be one of the, the toughest stretches to end college hockey uh, next year, honestly. Um, everybody is currently ranked in the top 12 other than Miami. Uh, but yeah, you open that, that highway to hell and Grand Forks, North Dakota, taking on the Fighting Sioux, the University of North Dakota, who are going to be a slightly different looking team, as every team will. Uh, you know, with grad transfers, transfer students coming in, leaving, guys signing pro deals. Um, Jake Sanderson, a defenseman who had, mm-hmm. who could have had an incredible like lifetime career uh, season last year, uh, not able to necessarily capture all of the incredibleness that it could have been, whether it was injury or illness. You know, he was selected to a World Junior team. Uh, at the tournament ended up getting canceled on him. Uh, he was then selected to the Olympics, ended up getting injured. Uh, the injury mm-hmm. came back at the end of the year and knocked him out of the tournament, uh, both the NCHC tournament and the NCAA tournament. Um, but still, it was a team that you know finished second or tied for first in the regular season yeah. with Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, they lost to Western in the frozen faceoff semifinals um, by, by a solid score. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. They they have incoming, I believe, grad transfer Jake Ryder from uh, Michigan State will take over as their goaltender, I believe. And you know they won three out of four games from against Duluth last season. Uh, you know this is kind of it's a conference rivalry that goes back to the WCHA. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily as big of a rival as some of the other ones that you guys play, but these are two teams that are always on a collision course, and they're two runaway trains sometimes. And I expect nothing it, less this time. It's 
there's something that has to do with the northern part of our states. Uh, pretty much Grand Forks is roughly straight across from Duluth. And there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of North Dakota fans up on the Iron Range. And there are a lot of UMD fans. And they draw well and things get heated in the crowd. I, I think this is still our biggest rival. Gopher fans, we deal with them. St. Cloud, it's become more of a rivalry just in the conference. North Dakota, I can't stand them. And, and, and oh, I think most people in the conference can't stand them. But it, it's a huge rivalry. And when we were talking with Trevor, that was his first start. To start this whole thing, going to Grand Forks and Ralph Engelstead Arena, Oh boy, good luck, boys. For uh, now, you had your introduction to the conference. Now here's your real introduction to the conference. Yeah, you better have your big boy pants on for that game. Like that, that is just that game. No matter when it's played in the season, that is a playoff hockey game. Uh, North Dakota could essentially be the thirty third ter- team in the NHL. Uh, they they sell out better than Arizona. They travel better than Las Vegas. They like, they are, in all intents and purposes, an NHL team playing in college hockey with the way that like their fans act, the look of their stadium, their arena, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it, they're a team that can be beat, and and we have seen that. Um, you know, they were they their coaching staff did an incredible job with the turnaround that that team did last year. Uh, and they're only going to be more experienced this year. Yes, they do lose some top-tier guys, but it's not as big of a reload as it was last year, and we still saw what they did last year. Brad Berry is an incredible coach. He, he, just what he's, what he's done with the teams that he's had um, and continuing on the, the success that Dave Haxtell had while he was the head coach, and uh, then Brad took over, it, it's – there are certain guys that they just have what it takes. Scott Sandlin, Bob Motzko, Brad Berry. He, Haxtell took the money. Brad stepped in. You lost so many guys. Uh, was it Shield that they lost? And then they got Driscoll? I believe so. Driscoll was yeah, a, a, a transfer. He was the Bemidji State. For, yeah, I, cu- I couldn't quite remember which one. Solid goalies, losing a lot of top tier talent though, coaching that team up to to share the the title Penrose. regular season. Yeah, share the Penrose. Uh unbelievable job. So I I would not want to be a freshman going into there. No. But you know, it doesn't get any easier because you turn around and, and granted you get them at home first, but it's right into St. Cloud State, uh, who you guys competed with all of the final two months of last year uh you guys played six times um and and four in a row (laughs) yeah four in a row uh you split the regular season however st cloud was able to steal home ice and and get that last coveted fourth place final uh spot in the nchc rankings but i I would i would say that you know, at the end of the day, you guys won the season being able to, to knock them off in two in the playoffs, even though you did have to play them at St. Cloud. Um, but and, they, were, uh, they were without their starting goalie in Rennick. I believe he was injured. Uh, he will not be their goalie next year. He has gone to, was it? The Didn't he go Kings? to Vegas? Or, no, I think it was the Kings. But yeah, he was actually, he wasn't even injured. He was out with a uh, non-COVID-related illness. Oh, okay, is that what it was? I couldn't remember uh, if they said that, injured or, or illness. Um, that's what it was. As we've, but that, as, as we've learned, coaches can be kind of tricky with that kind of information, and, and maybe we'll have mm-hmm. that story retold to us at some other time. But uh, the chess game that goes beyond just the starting lineups and, and who's on the ice at any given time is incredible when you we really dive into the coaching staffs. Um, and but yeah, the thing with I'm looking forward with, to the series it, I think five out of the, the six games went to overtime in in the season plus 
playoffs. And like you said, with the coaching staff, Brett Larson was uh, an assistant coach under Scott Sandlin. He knows what Scott's going to do, but Scott knows that Brett knows what he's going to do. And so there is that mind game and the same type of, they they kind of go after the same type of recruits. Mm -hmm. They're going to have obviously different styles that they want to play, but there's a lot of similarities. Uh, And over the past four years, this has been the most fun series to watch. Um, Western, especially this year, that's going to be a really fun series to watch with how close we played. But playing St. Cloud has been the most entertaining. And there has been that rivalry that's developed now between the fans because of how close we've played each other and how many times we've played each other. Mm -hmm. I think the last couple uh, NCHC championship games other than this year were UMD and St. Cloud trying to go for that auto bid it's just uh we're constantly playing each other and that's what you need to build up that animosity and it's going to be really really fun thank god we have them at home to start yeah and then you stay at home and it's a rematch with uh western who we've covered before you know it's going to be interesting to see how uh these two teams rematch you know with depending on the goalie situation uh, what kind of year the incoming freshmen have, how the last year's freshmen step up and, and become more, and the sophomores take on more of a leadership role as they become juniors and the juniors become seniors. Because I think right now we only have potentially one guy from this year's junior class staying to for a senior season, and there may be a senior last year who's staying for a fifth year or an extra year. Um so not necessarily as experienced as teams we've had in the past. And maybe once we look at you know the transfers, maybe they add some of that experience. So I believe there are a couple other guys who are coming in. Um, but you still have to put that team together that's going to be on the ice, and there has to be that team mindset of how they play. So it'll be interesting to look back at this series after that first one and really how the year shakes out to get to that point where these two teams are able to rematch. Um, but again, it's a, it's a series that I'm looking forward to. Um, I'll have to watch that one on the on the app. Probably put it on the projector. Um, but yeah, or just come up to Duluth. Yeah, you know, maybe see what happens. <laughs> and um, then it, yeah, it doesn't get any easier. So we've had North Dakota there. We have for Saint, Saint Cloud, Cloud and hit- Western. Home for Western, and then we go to Denver. Yep, you get to you get to breathe that thin air a mile high. Uh, you know, again, like that. God, they are such a well conditioned team, and and you know, there's reasons that Olympic athletes go and train at high elevation. Uh, mm-hmm. It it'll tear your body up, but it'll build you into something stronger. And it's honestly, I think one of the reasons that Denver is so good. Uh, they don't wear out. You know, it, it, when you no. even when you go up there, you wear out before they do, uh, and you can't sit on a lead there. You know, Western was up a couple games last year, and, and due to two big second periods, Western lost two games. Uh, they were undefeated at home until damn near the end of the season when Minnesota Duluth came to town and stole a game. Uh, are they capable of doing that again this year? Absolutely. On bo- in both regards, you know, Denver could run the table and be undefeated until February seventeenth, when Duluth comes knocking, and Duluth could hand them that first loss at home again. And it, it goes both ways with the conditioning and just the style that they play, and and the kids buying in. They Denver has that history. Um, I think. Between Denver and North Dakota, the, arguably two of the most historic programs in college hockey. Yes, you can say Michigan. Yes, you could say University of Minnesota. And then BC and BU. But I would put Denver and North Dakota right at the top of that list. And so you have the talent. You have the conditioning but then you have the coaching and the kids buying into that system and program consistency. 
Like exactly. Those two, Denver and Den in North Dakota, have been very good teams for a very long time. You know, we're not looking at a team that hasn't won a national title in twenty years. We're looking at a team that's won two in less than ten. Uh, you know, they right. weren't back to back years, but they were still able to. They've been at the top of the mountain, and they stay there, both figuratively and literally. You know, with mm-hmm. a campus that resides in the Rocky Mountains. Um, not. Granted, any team is capable of beating any other team in this conference. We've seen it. We'll continue to see it, and we'll be surprised every time we do see it. But this is another heavyweight fight that everyone should watch and pay attention to. And, Absolutely. You know, we saw these two, these are two teams that, you know, they saw each other. They'll see each other four times next year. As of right now, they saw each other six times last year, I think. Did you play two series with Denver last year? I know you played yeah, them we played, there. Yeah, we played two series because I, I was at um, – we got the shit kicked out of us in the first game, and then we kicked the shit out of them in the second game that I was at. Uh, and it was right around winter break. So th- they actually – So you guys played part of the schedule, six times last year then? Did we play each other six? If you played two series in the regular season, you played each other in the NCHC semifinals – when Fancy went on that roll of three straight shutouts, that's, and that's, then you played in the right. NCAA tournament yeah. to earn so a we, spot in the, fro- in the uh, Frozen Four. That's right. We did play them. Six, we played both them and St. Cloud. Six times. Six times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But and, um, and I mean, unfortunately, Denver came out ahead last year, but I, that was they, every game was a battle. It, it literally was one lucky bounce that finally beat Fanti, who was on an incredible run last mm-hmm. year, and uh, you know could have potentially beaten them to to earn a spot in the Frozen Four for for Duluth. So for the four straight year, yeah, technically, but um, yeah, that it just that whole stretch of the schedule though, that's a that's a gauntlet and a half. There, I don't, I don't think. You know, we'll see what other teams have. We'll see what Western has when they come out with their their full schedule or what other NCHC teams come out with. But as far as other conferences go, the, the NCHC is the only conference that you're going to have to do that. Yeah, I mean, um, it is a title <laughs> no matter how you look at it. It's constantly top-ranked opponents. It's teams that are usually in the tournament or – fighting for spots in the tournament I mean, and not at just one at large bid you know there's multiple at large bids coming out of the nchc um okay thank god i thought i lost you for a second no i'm uh, here but you, you do kind of get a, a, a slight breather uh in having miami at minnesota duluth february 24th and 5th but again you know this isn't a, just because you take them lightly doesn't mean that it can't jump up and bite you in the butt um Miami is a team that has struggled the last few years. Um, you know, they went seven twenty seven and two last year. They had they're in their third year, I believe, with their current coach who took over for Rico Blasi, the coach of Saint Thomas now. Um they had a couple of players transfer within the conference, including one who's gonna be in this game, and Derek Dashke. Uh and then their their goalie, like we mentioned earlier, who's transferring to Western Michigan. Um, so there are definitely NCHC caliber players on that team, but you know they 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 kind of have been the unfortunate bottom dweller for the last few years in the NCHC, competing with Colorado College for that last spot to see who's well, going to go to number one for the playoffs. And I'm I'm just looking at the schedule where I I can see. I could see a sweep at Omaha potentially, but even that I can see a split North Dakota. I could see a split or us getting swept cloud, a split or us getting swept or, you know, either way, Western, either way, Denver, either way, Miami, you finally get to them. I can see us getting swept because I think it was that. Yeah. It was them last year um, with Seville at, 
in goal. Uh, Seville is Omaha. Oh, he was Omaha. Okay, maybe it was him. Who is who is the Miami goalie again? I I'm sorry, I do not remember who their goalie was last year. Uh, I do know. I somewhat pay attention that uh, they did they did steal a game from you last year. I have it. I yeah, in my notes when we do the Miami schedule. Um, in they did in Duluth. Actually, and they, I was they took, so mad. They took five of the twelve points. You guys got seven of of twelve because they beat you once, and then they uh, there was a shootout. a shootout. Yeah. So. And their goalie, they did win the shootout, and their goalie was unbelievable. He had 53, 54 saves somewhere in there. Uh, and So actually, you guys did that twice then last year, and I didn't realize it. it. I'll talk about it when we get to the other teams because you also had the same issue with Colorado College. It, it was one of those. It was, we were almost overlooking these teams, and so I – we go through that gauntlet of of North Dakota Cloud, Western, and Denver, and then we go to Miami. I'm worried about that series. I can see us getting swept very easily mm-hmm. in that series. No, oh, yeah. Um, One through eight, there's not a team that you should take lightly in this division, if, in this conference. If you do, there it'll, it'll be a team that'll beat you. And then you've mm-hmm. got to figure out how to, to make up for it the next week. And by that point, it might be too too late. Um, you know, how many times we've seen, like, the top two teams in the country, or in the NCHC, which end up being, like, the top two teams in the country anyway. So yeah. have, like, 30 points by the time, like, January is here. Like, there, it, you cannot fall behind in this conference. No, you can't. And that's that's where we we run into trouble because we like to split series. We just do. It, it, it's just, it's what UMD does, and I'm used to it. Uh, well, I'm used to a lot of disappointment being a Minnesota sports fan, uh, but I, I'm used to it, and so I don't ever think we're gonna win the Penrose. I mean, I got yeah. For, I got hey, the shirt you're wearing. yeah yeah the shirt you're wearing is the ultimate disappointment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I can just see us getting swept, and then there's no reprieve at the end of the year, March 3rd and 4th. We have to go to St. Cloud again. And that could be another time where you're battling for, you know, that home playoff ice. And you can see that team six times in a year again. Absolutely. We, we could definitely be playing St. Cloud six times in a year. And well, if I have to go spend back to back weekends in St. Cloud, it's an hour drive, you know, two nights at a hotel room, just uh hope hope I don't oversleep on Sunday and have the hotel thinking I'm dead. <laughs> right. But I know where the team stays now because uh, I walked past when I was checking out and it was UMD Bulldogs men's hockey. <laughs> oh, hey, the team was in my hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's who they will wrap it up against is St. Cloud. And, and I expect that to be just as much of a barn burner as it was last year. Um Man, that was such a good series last year with the two Tuesday games and then the the drama of it coming down to literally the last game of the season to see who is going to get home ice. And, and I I and wish then, I wish Hrennick hadn't been sick because literally to get those two teams at full strength again one more time would have been incredible. Oh, um, uh, I would I I would have loved it, and I was even talking with um, I sat two different places for the friday game and the saturday game but on the friday game the guys that were sitting right in front of me i was talking with them and i said i wish rennick was playing because he's so good and it would just feel so much sweeter if we beat beat him instead of their backup now i think if rennick was playing it would have gone three but friday's game you, you could have put anyone in. You could have put Osgood in that. It wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. They St. Cloud just played that poorly. Yeah. It's hard to stay up that that long. You know, even against a rivalry team. Like at some point, something's going to break, and, and you're just hoping it breaks on the other side of the ice and not yours. Uh, but, man, that is a grueling second half to the season. I do wish that... 
it was a little more balanced between the first half and the second half. Um, like I would like to see St. Cloud and, and Duluth play a series before the, the, the long Christmas break there. Just because like I want I want to build the tension a little bit longer. I don't want it to be this quick back to back series and then mm-hmm. in a couple weeks like you guys play twice barely over a month apart. But I do think I, I do think that's something that Scott has a say in because you look at when we start showing up as a team. Oh, yeah. It's late in the year. And so, yeah, it's going to suck playing these teams. But having North Dakota, St. Cloud, Western, Denver, Miami, St. Cloud, now all of a sudden your team is geared up for these gritty, hard games that you can go forward and, and take into the playoffs and – you learn lessons where if you let down on any one of these games against these tough teams, you're going to lose. And so I think, I think it's done by design. Um, And I think the other, the other ADs, they have that same thought with, with, when they have powerful hockey programs, if if I'm Western, you you know, who, whoever your AD is, I don't know their name. And hockey's the big thing. Yeah, I want to do that. I want to gear my team up. You you look at, um, and and it's also with the commissioner too of the NCHC. That'd be interesting to see how we we schedule our season with first full season AD Dan Bartholomew, Bartholomew, whatever coming in, uh, taking over from Kathy Beauregard. But it's you you look at a lot of the the top programs. Uh, in any sport, they have a lot of their tough games at the end of the year. And the the same thing goes with, with hockey, um, with us playing St. Cloud at the end of the year. Um, you guys play Omaha, uh, typically? Well, you play Miami. We get Miami. We, okay. we carry over that CCHA oh, well, rivalry. Well, that explains why you guys don't do so well in the playoffs. <laughs> you, mean, you know, we might not be <laughs> Um, but I, I do think there there is part of that that plays in into things as well. They try to keep. Um, I think they try to keep those like old time long standing rivalries for the last season or the last weekend of the season. Like you guys generally play Cloud, we generally play Miami, uh, Denver generally plays Colorado, and mm-hmm. that just kind of unfortunately leaves Nebraska and North Dakota to to slug it out. Not that you know. I don't know that they're necessarily a rival, but they're becoming one because everybody else has already partnered up and they're the two two left standing. Yeah, they're just kind of like, you're the last people at the dance and neither one of you find each other attractive, but, well, you don't want to be left out. Yeah. So, ah, screw it. Pretty much. Um, I think, you know, it was just, it was a little bit longer of an episode. We're at an hour and 10 minutes-ish minus pre-show music. Uh, but I think that's kind of what the, these episodes are going to look like. We have two more ready to go. We're waiting for uh, more schedules to be released. We're going to try and potentially work on a guest for next week. I, I don't want to necessarily do these episodes back to back. As we get closer to the season, we'll try and look at you know kind of what the rosters are beginning to look like once those are announced. Um, I believe there's still work to do for those and players aren't, you know, working out at the moment or if they are, it's on their individual terms or getting, they should be going to training camps or, or summer camps with pro teams here in the not too distant future. Once the NC or the Stanley cup finals wrap up. So all kinds of news will be coming out, you know, who's going where we can look at some of that stuff. Um, but it'll kind of be a surprise as to what we do for next week, I think. It's a surprise for us, too. So uh, stay tuned, because we don't even know what we're doing uh, sometimes until about 20 minutes before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if something cool happens, you know, we'll we'll put out a tweet and say that something amazing is happening. 
Uh, if you have stumbled upon this episode, whether it's here on Twitch or on YouTube, and you like what you saw, you can give the page a follow, give the channel on YouTube a sub, um, give likes on YouTube, give dislikes on YouTube, type comments, don't type comments, whatever. Uh, we're on Twitter. There, The handles are there for both of us in this area on this page that we're currently looking at. Um, there's a Gmail account. It's Goldhorns and Fight Songs at gmail.com. There's a Twitter handle for the page. It's Goldhorn Fight Song. No O's after Goal. So G O A L S N G F I G H T S N G. That one's on Twitter. Uh, leave comments. Don't. Whatever. Subscribe. Don't subscribe. Follow. Don't follow. Meh. You're a human. You can do what you want. You're a human. Make some choices. Um. Until next time, remember that when you put pucks on net, good things happen, like goal horns and fight songs. And we will catch you next time. I don't have the song ready. That's unfortunate. So hang on. Well, <laughs> oh, awkward silence at their awkward moments at the end. That makes every episode great. Where is it? I don't know you, what I'm doing. Q coach from Letter Kenny. <laughs> oh, there. It Where's is. my garbage can? So there's that one. And now. Enjoy the screen again. Mm-hmm.